I can't believe you've been thinking about me this much. Thanks for forgiving me. With these words, my husband tightly grasped the hand of his affair partner right in front of me. As I watched the two of them basking in apparent joy, I secretly smirked. Enjoy your fleeting dream together. I can't wait to see their faces twist in shock. My name is Molly, 29 years old. I met Pat at a mixer and we're now in our fourth year of marriage. Pat works in sales for a typical company and when he returns home always varies. About three years ago, he started coming home in the early morning every Friday. I immediately suspected infidelity. He would always be gazing at his phone when at home and sometimes a foolish grin would cross his face. He would hastily hide the screen when I walked behind him, and sometimes there was a scent of women's perfume. What are you looking at? You seem happy. I once asked him, testing the waters. Nah, the stocks I bought recently are doing well. I'll get a cake after work next time. What do you want? Such lies can't last for long. What confirmed the affair was a woman's earring that came out of Pat's pocket. When I confronted him, he immediately confessed. I will never do it again. It was just a momentary lapse of judgment. Please forgive me. Molly, you're the only one I love. At this point, three months had passed since I first began to suspect his infidelity. A momentary lapse for three months? I can't believe you even after hearing that. Let's get a divorce. I declared, but Pat clung to my leg. Night after night, he would go on about how much he regretted it, how much he thought about me eventually shedding tears. Watching him, I sighed and decided to forgive him. I won't let you off next time. I gave him a stern warning and we set some ground rules. Firstly, he must contact me whenever he's going to be late due to work. After work, he must return home directly, and if he wants to stop by somewhere, he needs my permission. It may seem controlling, but it's to prevent the same mistake from happening again. I set these conditions to alleviate at least some of my anxiety. If that's what it takes to be forgiven. Pat agreed without hesitation. I was hoping that with this, Pat would reform, and we could eventually become a loving couple again. After all, he was the person I decided to spend my life with at one point. Although the wounds from his betrayal hadn't fully healed, I held on to hope for the future and decided to continue my relationship with Pat. However, even if he says such apologies, he's still a man who was intimate with another woman behind my back. Thinking about it just filled me with disgust. For a while, I decided to sleep in a separate bedroom from Pat. Half a year has passed since Pat's infidelity was discovered. He was diligently following the agreed conditions, but lately it seems like Pat is taking the agreement lightly. Why didn't you let me know you'd be late? We agreed you would tell me when you'd be late, remember? I questioned him when he arrived home at dawn. Pat let out an exaggerated sigh and retorted, oh, Do you really expect me to inform you every single time? Sometimes the conversation gets interesting, and before you know it, time has flown. How much control over me do you need? We're a couple. Shouldn't you trust me a bit more? Honestly, who does he think he is, saying something like that? He was the one who caused all of this. Have you forgotten what you did? You were the one who agreed to these conditions, weren't you? If you can't stick to them, you're breaking the rules, right? If you can't keep your promises, I'll have to reconsider our relationship. Upon hearing this, Pat, who had been looking down on me with such confidence, suddenly looked uneasy. Reconsider? What do you mean? I mean considering separation or divorce. After all, while I forgave your cheating, I haven't fully trusted you since. If you betray my trust again, I'll consider separation or divorce. At that, Pat clung to my leg, just like the first time, apologizing. I'm sorry, I'll keep you informed. I can't live without you, Molly. Please, don't say such things. 
If that's what you think, prove it with your actions. I replied coldly and headed to my bedroom. Since then, Pat has been diligent about keeping me informed. While he often comes home late, it seems he has made a good impression on his clients and gets invited to the drinking parties quite often. I have another drinking party today. We're close to sealing a deal. You go ahead and sleep. Reading the message from Pat, I let out a sigh. Maybe if he's going to be late, I should take a detour on my way home. I'm curious about some new cosmetics, and it could be a good diversion. It had been a while, but I decided to go to the department store after work. On my way to the department store, I happened to spot Pat. He was walking arm in arm with a woman, looking quite comfortable. That woman, there's no mistaking it, she was the woman Pat cheated on me with. When I confronted him about his affair six months ago, I had him delete all her photos. And there she was, standing next to Pat. He had been talking about his clients and contracts so seriously, and yet here he was, cheating again. What was all that effort for? If he likes other women so much, he might as well just go be with them. My emotions were all mixed up, my body shaking uncontrollably. I need evidence. Next thing I knew, I was taking pictures of my husband's infidelity with my smartphone. I lost any desire to shop and decided to go straight home. The next day, Pat came home in the morning as if nothing had happened. I got carried away talking with clients last night. We were drinking till just now. Listening to their stories is exhausting. I'm gonna take a shower and lie down. I see. He had been out having a good time till morning. Of course he must be tired. From the bathroom, I could hear his cheerful humming. As I listened, my anger, which had been building up, reached its peak. Thinking he could live as he always had, betraying me twice? I will make this utterly selfish husband understand. A week later, as soon as he got home, Pat approached me. Hey, are you okay today? Absolutely not. Don't touch me. When I pushed his hand away from my waist, Pat distorted his face in a split second. Enough already. Do you have any idea how much I'm holding back? He hit my cheek with the hand I had just pushed away. Unbelievable. He was not only cheating, but also getting violent. I shouldn't have forgiven him back then. Overwhelmed with regret, I felt tears welling up in my eyes. But now is not the time to cry. In my pocket, a voice recorder that would serve as evidence was running. You're not holding back at all. If you want to do it so badly, why don't you do as much as you want with your mistress? When I shouted like that, Pat's eyes widened in surprise. You think I haven't noticed? I know everything. What? What are you talking about? Your favorite Anna should be arriving soon. At the same time, the house's doorbell rang. Pat's face turned pale at the sudden appearance of his mistress. In fact, I had been in contact with Anna during the week. The moment she learned I was Pat's wife, she grimaced as if annoyed, but she immediately smiled when I said, I'm going to divorce him. Hmm, I thought you would hold on longer, but you're surprisingly easygoing, huh? Let's sit down and talk, the three of us. That's how it happened, and I had told Anna to come here at this time today. As soon as Anna appeared, she said, we can finally be together! And quickly wrapped her arm around Pat's. Hey, hey! It's okay, your wife knows already. And we finally agreed, so it's fine. Everything is set? That's right. I interrupted the two's conversation. I can't be with you anymore. Anna will be the one to support you from now on. Lucky you. He had a complex look on his face and was alternating his glances between me and Anna as he said, But... are you sure? But you... It's not about what's good or not. This is the best way for everyone to be happy. Pat seemed to be hesitating for a while at my words, 
but he seemed to have made up his mind as he nodded strongly. So you were thinking about me all this time. Thank you, Molly. I'll live with Anna. Thank you for understanding. Whether he misunderstood something, he took Anna's hand and squeezed it strongly. The two of them were so engrossed in their own world, it was as if they had forgotten I was there. Looking at their happy faces, I felt contempt anew. But you know, their smiles would distort soon. Thinking about it, I couldn't help but grin. It's a shame that I won't be able to see what happens to these two from now on. I should have planted a camera. Well, I do have a voice recorder to record their conversations. I handed Pat the divorce papers, made him sign and put a seal on it, and packed out my small items. The movers will come for the rest of the stuff tomorrow, so see ya! With that, I said goodbye to the house I had lived in for four years. It was such an anticlimactic ending. Two weeks later, a call came in. It was Pat. The time had finally come. I picked up the phone with a grin. Hello? Uh, hello, Molly. A person claiming to be your lawyer just came by. What's going on? You said you were forgiving me, right? I didn't hear anything about alimony. That's right. Right after divorcing Pat, I had visited a law firm. I took pictures of the affair, I had been recording when I called Anna to the house, and of course, the moment Pat laid his hand on me was also recorded. There was plenty of evidence, so I was able to get a notarized statement immediately. Still, I felt uneasy with just a notarized statement, so I asked the lawyer to visit him directly. I already received a report from the lawyer, so I was eagerly waiting for a call from Pat. I can't afford to pay alimony. This is out of the blue. I could tell how flustered he was, even over the phone, but I calmly replied, I never said I would forgive you, did I? It's pretty obvious you'd be asked to pay alimony after having an affair, don't you think? Plus, you raised a hand to me. What? Wait a minute. Yes, I shouldn't have hit you in the heat of the moment, but things were settled between you and Anna, right? Isn't that why you called Anna to the house? Pat began to talk rapidly. I watched him ridiculous as he was and told him with a triumphant tone. I continued, How dare you cheat on me behind my back and still think you can walk away unscathed? Do you think things are settled between Anna and me? What gave you that impression? How about you stop conveniently interpreting things in your favor? Let's... let's talk about this, Molly. I forgave you once for your infidelity, but there won't be a second time. I was certain that even he, in his foolishness, would understand the gravity of the situation now. But contrary to my expectations, Pat exploded. You've got to be kidding me. If I knew it would come to this, I would never have chosen Anna. You deceived me. How many times does this man need to disappoint me before he's satisfied? As I stood in disbelief, unable to respond, I heard Anna's voice coming from the other end of the phone. What do you mean by that? Didn't you want to be with me? You told me I can't be with you because my wife won't divorce me. You deceived me too. Apparently, things were getting heated on the other end of the line. It's a shame I couldn't witness it in person. I don't have the money to pay compensation. You should pay it. I don't have that kind of money either. Pay your own share. You're the reason we're in this mess. You should apologize. No, you should apologize. Their argument continued like this until Pat finally shouted at Anna. Just shut up. Right now, I'm talking to Molly. Then, lowering his voice, Pat made an unbelievable proposal. I'll break up with Anna. Let's start over, Molly. I realized it's you whom I truly love. I can't live without you, Molly. I made a mistake. Please forgive me. Let's start over. The nerve of him to say something so self-serving. I can't believe I've wasted six months of my life showing leniency to such a fool. With all the volume I could muster, I yelled at Pat. Listen here, if your apology solved everything, we wouldn't need lawyers. 
start over with you? The very thought makes me want to vomit. Whether you break up with her or not is irrelevant to me. I don't have the slightest intention of getting back together with you. And I absolutely will not cancel the compensation claim. Don't you dare contact me ever again. Wait, please. Molly. Molly. He kept calling out my name, but I simply hung up the phone. Several calls came in from him after that, but I ignored them all. Meanwhile, I found that the compensation of $35,000 and $15,000, a total of $50,000, had been deposited into my account. According to my lawyer, Pat and Anna got into serious trouble and even ended up involving the police. They both insisted that they were the victims and were only telling lies to protect themselves, leaving the police at a loss. In the end, they paid me the compensation, but it seems they're both trying to get the money back from each other, even going as far as filing lawsuits against one another. A man who cheats on his wife without a second thought, and a woman who willingly gets involved with a married man. A fitting end, indeed. As for me, I took this opportunity to quit my job and move to a quieter place in the Vermont countryside, which I had been eyeing for a while. I think I'll take it easy, away from the hustle and bustle of the city, for a while.